in the frenetic pace of attempting to raise challenges to the election in several states, including Georgia, I failed to do my due diligence. I believe in and I value election integrity. If I knew then what I know now, I would have declined to represent Donald Trump in these post-election challenges. I look back on this whole experience with deep remorse. That tearful woman you just heard from was former Trump lawyer Jenna Ellis, who is one of the more recent individuals to turn, uh, well, flip, if you will, in the case, the Georgia case on election interference. She has decided to take a plea deal in that case. And uh, that means that she will not only plead guilty to what you're about to hear, but also provide testimony in regard to the other co-defendants in the case. That could include people like Rudy Giuliani and Donald Trump, of course. So let's hear what she pleaded guilty to in court. Is it your decision to waive these rights and enter a guilty plea because you are in fact guilty? It is. How do you plead to aiding and abetting false statements and writings and under accusation 23 SC 190514? Guilty. And is this your signature along with Mr. Hogue's signature on the accusation? It is. And is this guilty plea freely and voluntarily given with full knowledge of the charges against you? It is. So Ellis has pleaded guilty to making false statements in regard to the 2020 presidential election. Now in her you know, statement in court, which you saw at the very beginning of this story, she was tearful. What was kind of frustrating to me was how she seemed to want to place the blame on her behavior on everyone else. Essentially lying to her. She claimed that, you know, I should have done my due diligence and looked into these allegations that were being made, but I didn't. She knew what she was doing, but it doesn't matter. Look, she has decided to take this plea deal, which means she is going to cooperate with this investigation. So, Ellis, who had been facing two charges, um, so two charges, including violating Georgia's Anti Racketeering Act, pleaded guilty in court Tuesday morning to a single felony count of aiding and abetting false statements and writings. The deal allows her to avoid jail time in exchange for providing evidence that could potentially implicate other defendants and agreeing to testify in any future trials. Ellis worked closely with person or closely with personal Trump lawyer Rudy Giuliani, another defendant in the case who faces 13 charges. So just based on what I've been reading about Ellis and what her role was as, as a lawyer for the campaign. It seems that she was much closer with Rudy Giuliani and that could mean that her testimony and cooperation in this case could be more damning for Giuliani than anyone else. But I am curious to see how this plays out, how her flipping is going to impact Donald Trump. Also curious how Donald Trump is gonna handle the fact that so many people have flipped on him at this point, including his former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, that story recently broke. Yeah, so look, if we were dishonest, we would tell you now, Oh, Jenna Ellis is the most credible person there is, because she's about to give testimony against Donald Trump. So of course we believe everything she's saying now, and so should the jury, right? No, but Jenna Ellis is an obvious liar, right? We're not hiding that fact. Like she's like, oh, I didn't check, and people lied to me. You went on national television in multiple giant press conferences in the middle of one of the most important political events in American history. And you claim that you were positive that Joe Biden had a nefarious plot to steal this election and you never checked? Come on, come on. I mean, if that's true, you're the most negligent, ridiculous, pathetic lawyer slash person in history. And you should be disbarred, you should be you should, like, just go into a cave and never come out again for the humiliation that you should suffer for not having even checked one piece of evidence before you went and lied to the country over and over again about how you were positive that that Biden had stolen this election and Trump was the rightful leader. Now, of course, I don't believe her. Of course, right. she checked and she knew, she knew she was lying. And she thought, mm, I'm gonna get famous and rich, yes. And then we'll steal the election and maybe I'll get a great job in the Trump administration. Piece of crap, evil person. Don't the tears can kiss my ass. Those tears are useless. They're oh, I got caught. I was gonna go to jail. Yeah, that's what I thought. 
That's what I thought. I remember other people crying in court and then coming out later and doing a, a little jig. Anyways. So let's talk so. a little bit about what her role in um, the Trump campaign was and, and what she herself carried out. Can I get to those details? Yes, but I wanna explain that, guys, in a second, I'm gonna tell you why I think you can trust what she's saying now as opposed to earlier because there is a real reason. But first, let's give you more details. Okay, so what was her role? What did she do? Um, this also pours cold water on the notion that she had no idea that these were all just lies. So Ellis worked closely with Giuliani, traveling to battleground states including Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, where prosecutors say she spoke to lawyers urging them to reject the popular vote results in their states. The Georgia indictment also pointed to memos that she wrote for Trump, outlining how Vice President Mike Pence could overturn the election results. So she was part of the effort to reject the election results, implement the fake electors. So that's both good for us in regard to this plea deal because it means that she could have you know a lot of tea to spill in this case. Not so great for her in terms of what she's trying to do with changing the public's perception of who she is and what she engaged in. Because she was very much involved. She didn't just go around like Mark Meadows did lying vocally about the results of the 2020 election. She took part in writing those memos. She helped to put those wheels in motion in regard to the fake electors based on what we're seeing in the indictment. So she has now pleaded guilty. I also wanna remind you all that previously she had turned against Trump, not in this case, but publicly on social media because the legal bills were starting to stack up. And Trump had no interest in helping any of the co-defendants when Oops. it came to those legal bills. And I remember saying at the time when that story broke, this is going to bite Trump in the ass. Because what incentive do these individuals have to not flip on him? You know, yeah. look, there's a good chance that he might be found guilty and he might not even get sentenced to any prison time. Them though, okay, the Jenna Ellis's of the world, they'll get sentenced to prison. Yeah, they certainly would have if they hadn't flipped and that's gonna right. go to my point. But I just wanna double down on what Anna said. Trump, world's dumbest man. How do you not give money to your co-defendants, you schmuck? Of course they're gonna flip on you if they have no uh, money to defend themselves, etc. And besides which, you know you did it and you know they did it. That's when you helped them the most. You don't go, well, I hope they take 20 years to life for me. <laughs> God, he's so pathetic and dumb. Okay, anyways. So now let me just let them know what, what she's agreed to do, because that's also relevant for the commentary you're gonna give. So according to the details of this plea agreement, Ellis agreed to complete three to five years probation and 100 hours of community service and pay a $5,000, uh, pay $5,000 in restitution to the Georgia State Secretary of State. She also agreed to write a letter of apology to the state of Georgia, something that every single one of these individuals who took a plea deal agreed to do. Um, so that is that is the extent of the punishment that she will face as a result of her agreeing to this plea deal. So Jane, yeah. go ahead. So first of all, that shows you uh, two things. One, you get probation of three to five years. That means that it, you know I, I was doing hyperbole with 20 years to life. You're not gonna get life for this. But oh, by the way, coup against America, I think you should get life. Uh, but anyways, but realistically, that means she would have gotten a very heavy sentence if she had not uh, cooperated. Okay, but the second thing that it tells you is, since she's not actually getting jail time, she's getting probation, etc. That means she gave pretty good evidence, uh, and so you don't take that deal unless you got good evidence. So now that's another giant mark against Donald Trump, and he's reeling. Okay, now why should you believe her today as opposed to earlier? Well, if she was telling the truth earlier and this election was stolen by Biden and Hugo Chavez and a Kraken, uh, why wouldn't she just stick with that? Why would she admit to a crime she didn't do? Well, then she has to cry and beg and her career is ruined and she has to admit she did it. And she gets three to five years probation and she gets all this and it goes on her criminal record. You would not You would never admit that. If A, you didn't do it, and B, you had Donald Trump behind you, who at this point was is now favored to win the election. You'd be nuts to agree to something you didn't do under that circumstance, especially with all the political power behind you. The only reason you would admit it at this point is they had you dead to rights. They had all the evidence that you were lying and you were gonna go to jail for a long time. 
And so then you realize, all right, the jig is up. Yes, you got me. Uh, I was lying before, and now I'm telling the truth because I don't want to go to jail. And you had overwhelming evidence, and I was going to go to jail. That's why she's now telling the truth. Thanks for watching. If you become a member, you get to watch all this ad free, except for, of course, this ad. Still, hit the join button below.